guys all right we're talking about the mindset of a leader <clears throat> and uh, I like to use this stick person a lot of you guys have seen this so we're going to start there it's going to be the foundation and then we'll kind of go from there so some of this that we're initially going to talk about probably heard me talk about this or you know I've heard it somewhere but we've got to have a foundation we're going to build from there right so we talk about the mindset of a leader and many times you think about mindset or mind you think about the brain, but the brain's the organ, right? So we do this drawing that kind of shows us the mind. So we do a big circle, right? And that represents the head. And then do a little neck. And then do another little circle, and that represents the body. And we'll put some little legs and some arms like that. We call this our stick man, right? We call this the stick man. And it's not that I'm just such a bad drawer, and that it's that disproportionate but most of us think that you know we're here on this physical plane we experience life here on this physical plane we see we smell we taste we touch we think that's the biggest part of who we are right that's actually the smallest part of who we are because we are spiritual beings we have an intellect and we live in a physical body, right? Spiritual beings have an intellect and live in a physical body, right? Now, if you look it up in the Bible, it says spirit, soul, body, right? Spirit, soul, body, but if you give me some grace, because we're talking about mindset and intellect, I'm gonna keep intellect, okay? So, spiritual beings gifted with the intellect living in a physical body. You know, as, I, as I've studied this and I started reading through the book of John, there's so much, I love the book of John, and there's so much confusion about who Jesus is and then some of the things that Jesus says. Because a lot of times Jesus is talking on the spiritual plane, but they're taking it in the physical plane, right? So Nicodemus comes to him at night, and uh, if you read it, it's kind of funny. Nicodemus, he says, hey, teacher, uh, we know you're a teacher or whatever. And Jesus said, hey, you must be born again. He's like, and it's kind of funny. He comes to him with, hey, teacher, and Jesus just gets right to the point, right? He says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus is like, hold on, wait. I got to go back into my mama's womb again? And Jesus is talking on the spiritual plane. Nicodemus is thinking the physical plane. Jesus, you've got to be spiritually born, right? And then he goes to the woman at the well. He talks to the woman at the well and says, you know, I can give you living water where you'll never thirst again. She's like, heck yeah, give me some of that because I don't want to keep coming out here in the middle of the day, you know. She's thinking physical plane. He's saying spiritual plane. I'll give you spiritual water where you'll never thirst again, right? So we're spiritual beings, gifted with the intellect, living in the physical body, right? So although we're experiencing the world here, I'm seeing you guys. I'm hearing cups claiming, right? That's the smallest part of who we are, but the majority of people stay there, right? We don't tap into this mind part, and then even the greatest part of who we are is the spiritual side, right? So I'm going to draw a line right here, and that's going to separate our mind, or we're going to say conscious mind up here. So I'm going to put a C right there, and I'm going to put a SC right here for the subconscious mind. So our conscious mind, that's our thinking mind, right? Thoughts come in, I see something, I see or I hear, I hear the coffee going over there and it produces a thought. Do I want some of that? No, I'm good. I just had some a little bit ago, right? It produces a thought. Subconscious part of our mind, that's our emotional part of our mind. That's our feeling mind. So our habits lie, our beliefs lie, our opinions, our perceptions, all that lie in the subconscious part of our mind. Right? So we have five senses. I'm going to draw these little antennas up here for our five senses. One, two, three, four, five. So thought comes in, it produces a thought. The thing about our conscious mind is it can accept or reject any thought that comes in. Right? It can accept it or reject it. I just talked about the coffee. It produced a thought. Do I want some of that? No, I don't. I reject it, right? Here's the deal, the subconscious part of your mind has no ability to reject any thought 
that is passed on to it, right? No ability to reject it, it has to accept it, right? Okay, cool, all right? <clears throat> but, but it doesn't automatically accept it as something that's over time. And I wanna, I wanna pause right here for one second. This part of your mind, your conscious part of your mind, it doesn't even form until you're like eight, nine, and 10 years old, okay? So you think about how important that is about what you're saying to your kids and what you're allowing them to watch because it's automatically being poured into here, poured into their beliefs, right? That's why we can talk about in December, the big fat man going around delivering presents to every house in the world, right? And the kids believe it, right? Because they have no ability to reason. They have no ability to reject that thought. They have to accept it, right? Y'all good? Hit my board now with Okay, we're good. Nicholas texted me and said, this is getting weird. This is getting weird. Oh, dude, we ain't even got weird yet, man. We just built the foundation of weird. Y'all stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, just stay tuned. Weirdchristian.com. Did Scooter approve this message? I don't know if he did or not. And yeah. He may not approve what we're about to talk about. He's pastor. So, all right. <laughs> so, all right, here it goes. So we have a thought comes in, it determines how we feel. So I have a thought, determines how I feel. How I feel in a given moment determines the action that I take and the actions I take produce the results that I get, right? Thoughts determine how I feel. How I feel in a given moment determines the actions I take. The actions I take produce the results that I get, right? So I have to run up in that building. Huh? I could have run up in that building. You could have run up in you that You wouldn't be sitting right here right now. <laughs> you right. Have you checked it this morning? Wouldn't have been right. Yeah, we checked it. Check that. <laughs> Somebody check that. Somebody check that. Somebody check that. Let him ask you why you did it. <laughs> so <clears throat> we have a thought come in, determines how we feel. Feelings determine our actions. Actions produce our results. Here's the deal is you can think anything you want to. Right? You can have any thought you want to. And if you, depending on the research you look at, we have between 60 and 90,000 90, thoughts per day. Mm. Here's a problem though 90% of those thoughts are the same exact thoughts we had the day before, mm. which are the same exact thoughts we had the day before. Right? So, although we can choose our thoughts, we have the same thought, which produces the same emotion, gives us the same action, and we get the same. Result, and we call that autopilot, right? Mm -hmm. Autopilot, do the same thing over and over and over. Jesus talked about take each thought captive, right? Every thought that comes in, you grab it by the collar and say, are you for me or are you against me, right? You take it like, it says, take it captive. Think about that as a prisoner of war. You're taking a prisoner of war captive. What you doing here, boy? Yeah, what you doing here? What you doing here? I kind of was thinking about this the other day. It's kind of like, your goal over here, that's supposed to be a star, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you're, you're, kind of like your goal is like a, a country or a kingdom, right? And each thought that comes in is either a citizen of that kingdom or it's not a citizen of that kingdom, right? It's either a citizen or it's not. But most people, they don't have like a bodyguard. Chris was a guard, you know, he-, he, he uh, Shout out. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Shout out over there on uh, Facebook, that's right. Chris Bennett, y'all holler at him. Uh, <laughs> so most people don't have a guard right here, right? So they have any thought that comes in. They're not even thinking about it. They're not even aware of the thoughts that they're listening to on radio. They're not even aware of the things they're putting into their mind through what they watch on TV, right? Our job now is to put a bodyguard here at the entrance to the kingdom and say, are you for me or are you against me, right? Are you a citizen or are you not a citizen? And if you're not a citizen, you're an enemy, right? And you cast them out. Uh, the other thing is, you know, you, you, you read in Proverbs, he talks about above all else, above all else, guard your heart because from it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart is this part of you right here. It's where your beliefs lie, your habits, your opinions, because our beliefs drive our behavior. Although I can choose my thoughts, what ultimately determines the actions I take is really my beliefs about that thought. 
right? And how I feel about that thought. And we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. Um, so <clears throat> like I said, our, our job is to put that um, position that there too. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about before I jump into something else. So we talk about, I said you have X thought, X feeling, X action, X result. Oh, yes, sir. When you finish that thought. No, go for it. Go for it. Well, can you short circuit this by not acting out of emotion and feeling? Yes. And that's where that putting somebody there is. Be more aware of what you're thinking about, right? We're going to kind of dive into a little bit, but what else are you thinking on that? Me? Yeah. Well, that was it. Oh, okay. Can you short circuit it? Yeah, but. I, mean, I feel like that's where we get into trouble is acting out of feeling and emotion and obviously not being intentional about our thought life and, yeah. and taking those things captive. But if you're also intentional about acting out of pragmatism or logic and rationality, can you not cut out half of those bad behaviors? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. We're going to talk about some of that too. Okay. And our reasoning, mental faculties, and all that good stuff. Because what we want to do is you have these beliefs that have been there for so long, right? Some of them have been there your whole life, right? <clears throat> and if we're not, one, aware of the thoughts that they're, we're coming in to our mind and challenging those thoughts, right? So Chris says, I want $1.3 million. Well, you're going to have some part of you, because you've never done it before, say, how are you going to do that? you never done that. Who do you think you are, Right? challenging those beliefs and when we talk about the reasoning mind there's two things you want to do is one challenge that belief not let it just pass through you want to challenge it but so you'll decrease it we'll use my two phrases up until now and isn't that interesting right yeah. <laughs> and then you want to increase the energy of what you want right so there's two ways is challenge the belief and then increase the energy of the goal and one thing that I've learned on that, which I think is great. Um, did you say that? You wanted 1.3? Mm -hmm. Okay. So one thing I've learned. Well, that leads us kind of into, we're, sorry, we got you. Away. That kind of leads me into where it was going next is kind of changing that mindset. So you talked about if you have X, you know, that autopilot, X thought provides X feeling, moves you doing the same action and X results, right? Well, let's say you you become aware of a new possibility, right? Of uh, okay, I've been charging, you know, what, what was the original man I worked with? Twenty dollars a man. Twenty dollars now. And I was paying them. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so now it's what? Now it's anywhere from thirty-seven fifty to forty-five. So forty-five. So you you become aware of this new possibility of going from twenty to forty-five. That's a new thought. New thought that comes in, we'll get that why, right? Well, that new thought, that's a possibility, but that is in conflict with the belief that's already there, right? And what's going to happen is you're going to bump up to what we call this terror barrier. Well, what you're believing about this new thought, you have to challenge that new thought, right? So you're bumping up against this terror barrier where you have to make a decision Am I going to press forward? Because if you're going to come to this, you're probably going to, you know, not necessarily in this, this scenario, but to move to this new possibility, you're going to need, you're going to do things you've never done before, think things you've never done before, try some things you've never done before, attempt things you've never attempted before. And that's sometimes scary, right? So that's what we call the terror barrier, where you either step through and make that become the new belief, or you step back into terror. comfort. Yeah, terror. terror. Oh. Yeah. Terror? Yeah. It, it, yeah, it I can't. Like terror barrier. <laughs> I'm, I'm too country. I can't pronounce it. Right? Terror. It's a terror. 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 You keep believing this until that becomes the new belief where you start taking the new action. Why it becomes a new action and why it becomes a new result. 
And because we don't stay stagnant and we people are growing, we're going to have new thoughts that come in that produce new thoughts, new actions, and new results, right? We're going to dive deeper into that. We're about to go into that mindset stuff here in just a little bit. But before, before I do that, I, I really, if there's one thing. Come on, man. If there's one thing that I hope you guys take away from this entire session, or the whole retreat, there's just one thing. My hope is that you would take away who you are and your position and your authority in Christ and anything else. We're about to go into this mindset, but there is something way more important, way more powerful than all this intellectual stuff. We can figure out things with the intellect, right? Man's intellect is, is awesome. But there's a higher part of who we are that we can tap into. I, I, talk, I, was, I think we talked about this on the Bible study the other night. I was reading, and, um, you know, Jesus does the, the feeding of the 5,000, right? Well, the feeding of the 5,000 is in all four Gospels. What, what's interesting to me about that is at the end of John, he makes a statement. He says, of all the things that Jesus did on his just the three year ministry, if everything he ever did and everything he ever said, there wouldn't be enough books in the world, right? So, what that tells me as a speaker, I know if Logan says, Hey, I want you to come in, I want you to do a six hour training with our team. That tells me I can, I can put in some activities, I can put in some fluff. But if he says, I want you to come in, and you got 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes. I want you to make the same point. And I can't add the fluff. I got to get right to the point. So that tells me every single word in the Bible is important. And if the same action is in all four, there's something pretty important there that, that he's trying to say. And obviously, that's a miracle. And it, it's showing us that, that Jesus is God, Jesus was God, and he's also man at the same time. But I think he's also trying to teach his disciples a lesson, right? You think about that. These are the guys who are going to carry on his message. And he's trying to teach them, hey, we've got a problem here. Your people are hungry, right? I don't want you to just solve it with man's intellect. See, they tried to say, well, let's send them away, or here's this five loaves or whatever. He said, I want you to tap in and press into the spirit and see what the Holy Spirit's got to say and what he's going to do instead of just use the main intellect, right? So that's that's what I'm going to talk about just for a few seconds here, all right? So this was not a first by speech. <laughs> well, no, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to get a little, a little weird. Yeah, no, I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what your Bible says Come about on. who you are and where you stand in Christ, okay? So um, I woke up with this phrase on my mind. This is replaying like an auto replay. Today? No, no, this is uh, 12 4 20. Okay. 12 4 20. Let me just read you the, the statement is the microwave gospel is killing the church and putting the kingdom in a box. Like, what in the world is that? <laughs> the microwave gospel is killing the church and putting the kingdom in a box. And I started thinking about that and praying into that. And so we rush, we work hard to get people to an altar to make a decision, but we're leaving folks at the altar. See, hearts are being transformed, but mindsets are not. And we're leaving people there at the altar. And this is what, I just want to read you what I wrote. In a world of instant popcorn, instant oatmeal, and Instagram, we want instant Christian Salvation is in an instant. It's in an instant, right? But maturity takes time. Hearts are being transformed, but mindsets are not. Jesus came and taught about the kingdom. If you look, everything he talked about was kingdom. He talked about the kingdom has come. And I, I'll pause right here for a second, too. Uh, I, I was listening to a pastor the other day, and he said something. And then when he said, I was like, oh, hold on a second. But then as he got talking, I was like, oh, okay, okay. He said, Jesus came and preached kingdom. Jesus did not just come for Calvary, right? He didn't come and preach Calvary. He preached kingdom. And I was like, oh, I don't say anything more about that. I may have to turn this dude off, you know? But he said, Calvary was the means, right? 
He said, he came to give you an inheritance and your inheritance was the kingdom. He said, how do you get your inheritance? You, you guys got an inheritance. How do you get an inheritance? Someone lost their life. Somebody lost their life, right? Jesus came to die so you could gain your inheritance and your inheritance is kingdom. There's a personal relationship with the creator of the universe. King, right? So anyway, sidetrack there. <laughs> um, they said Jesus came and taught about the kingdom and it will be upon this rock that he would build his church and the gates of hell would not overcome it. When we make a decision for Jesus, we're adopted and become heirs. We're accepted into the kingdom. We're a family where dad is king, making us princes and princes. There's a, there's a psalm that says uh, he turns paupers in the princes and seats them in the royal thrones of honor. So what's happening in the church is we're getting people at the altar, but we're leaving them there with a pauper mentality, a slave mentality, and we don't realize the um, that the kingdom mindset that we have because we're focused on religion, ritual, and not relationship and equipping. And I said in the business world, we got a term for that. We call that being transaction. And that's killing the church and putting the kingdom in a box because we've got all these princes and princesses with a slave mentality who don't understand the power and the authority that comes along with being a child of the king and then not empowered to understand where they fit into the king, right? So I want to I show you guys what your Bible says about you, right? All right, so I'm, I'm going to read some verses and also I, I, I know I know um, context is key right so you can write this down you can go back and look at these things I've already looked at the context and all that when taking scripture out of context that's not a good thing so I've, I've already done it but hey you go do it yourself don't 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 rely on myself so <clears throat> Ephesians uh, 6 talks about you know the armor of God uh, put on that armor but before it talks about that, it says, be strong in the Lord with his power and his might. And I think many times, us as good little Christians, good little Christians, we don't see ourselves as kingdom warriors. And we're so passive many times because we don't know, because we already know the ending of the story. We already know what it is, right? And so we never walk into that fullness of who, who we are in Christ. And we're passive with this false humility of who am I, right? I mean, who, who am I? So... Uh, I want to share with you what your Bible says, right? Psalm 113.8 says, He turns paupers in the princess and seats them on their royal thrones of honor. Ephesians 2, 5 and 6 says, We were dead, but he made us alive. But not only that, Scripture says we have been raised up and seated with him in heavenly places. Revelations 5, 9 through 10, Mary Nicholas. Revelation 5 through 10 says, He made us kings and priests, to God and we reign on earth. I looked that up. It is present tense. Present tense. Not future tense. It is present tense. All right, it's about to get good. Isaiah 22, 22. I will place the key of the house of David on his shoulder. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. Revelation 3, 7. These are the words of the Holy One who has David's key, who opens doors that no one can shut and who closes doors that no one can open. Matthew 16, 19. They're walking. And Jesus said, who, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, well, Son, I think, you know, you're Elijah and Elijah all that. And he says, well, who do you think I am? He said, well, Peter says, well, you, you're the Son of God. You're the King. And he said, right you are. And on that rock, I will build my church, Right? Where he used church is ecclesia. Again, we talked this morning in our Bible study. Ecclesia is a secular word. It's not a um, church isn't a, um, a, a religious word. It, in that time, it was a secular word, ecclesia. It was a governing authority. It was a governing authority that they brought all the Roman cities or whatever together to determine what they were going to do about war, make plans and all that stuff. Anyway, and he said, I, uh, and upon this rock, I will give you, uh, you know, uh, build my church. But he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And what you bind on earth will have be bound in heaven. And what you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Matthew 28, 18. And he says, all authority has been given to me on heaven 
and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples. Take my authority. Go in my authority and make disciples. You know, there's a, um, there's a story where this Roman centurion comes to Jesus. And he says, hey, uh, my servant's sick. Can you come heal my servant? And you say, yeah, I'm on the way. But the Roman centurion said, oh, hold on a second. I'm not worthy of you to come into my house. You just say the word, and I know he'll be healed. And Jesus said, wow, I've never seen such faith in Jerusalem. See, this guy understood what authority was. A centurion was under authority. He was Caesar's authority. And what he spoke and what he did came with the same authority as Caesar. Jesus is saying, my authority you walk in my authority. What you bind on earth will have been bound in heaven. What you loose will be loosed in heaven. So, with that, means we have power and authority. And we've been given the keys to the kingdom. And it's his intent that we would walk in his power and authority that he's given to us. And it's important for us to understand this because Ephesians 6, 2, 6, 12, I'm sorry, says our battle isn't against flesh and blood but it's against principalities and demons and powers, right? And if we don't understand that power and that authority or where we sit at and where we're seated at, then we think we're the effect of things. And Jesus didn't die for us to be the effect of things. He died for us to be causative, right? So our, our battle isn't against flesh and blood. It's not against, you know, Trump and Nance. It's not against Kamala Harris and... Um, Oh, what's his name? Biden. It's, it's not against the boss man. It's not against, you know, your wife or your kids. But it's against those powers and those principalities that are influencing all that stuff. You said we have the power and authority over that.